pretty face, funny hat. That's what my blondie is. Lovable feet, both flat. That's what my Dagwood is. Blondie's not always right. I let her think she is. All of my thoughts are bright. Long as he thinks they're his. Life with us is fun and crazy. Baby Duffling. Us and Daisy. What a family. Incredible. Bumsteadable. <laughs> Hurry, you'll miss your butt. Watch out, you'll burn your stew. Nothing's too much for us. As long as with me there's you. Dagwood and Blondie. Blondie and Dagwood. Always with me there's you. Get after that mud. Get into the car. She's been running me red. to Daisy. She isn't a mutt. She happens to be a thoroughbred mongrel. All I got to say is, there's a law that says that no dog can run loose on the street. And if I catch your mutt, I mean your thoroughbred mongrel, running loose without a leash and without someone hanging on to that leash, you'll pay a $500 fine. We only paid $3 for Daisy. Dagwood, you've got to talk to Daisy. I told her not to leave the yard this morning, and she disobeyed me. Yeah. Yesterday, she hid Cookie's doll, and the day before that, she tore up the Brady's newspaper. Mm. Oh, every spring, it's the same old story. She starts acting like a puppy, and we lead a dog's life. Yeah, well, where is she now, huh? Well, I don't know. But if she isn't here by the time I count three, she gets no ice cream on Sunday. One, two... <laughs> I knew that would work. <laughs> you talk to her, Dagwood, and I'll fix your breakfast. Oh, Blondie, I'm too tired for a father-daughter talk this morning. I stayed up half the night working on our budget. We got a lot of bills, Blondie. The cookies, tonsils, $115, Alexander's teeth, $75, Blondie's coat, $85, Dagwood's tie, 85 cents. Drink your orange juice, dear. Yeah. Oh, how are we ever going to pay everybody, Blondie? I'll loan you 10 cents, Daddy. Oh, now isn't that sweet, Dagwood? You don't have to, darling. Daddy will take care of everything. That's what daddies are for, to work hard and take care of their families. Yeah. Daddies are supposed to worry. Huh? And if daddies don't want to worry, they're supposed to ask for a raise at the office. Yeah, well, I guess I could ask Mr. Dithers for a raise, I guess, maybe. Gosh, Daddy, I hope I'm as brave as you are when I grow up. Thank you, Alexander. <laughs> Good morning. Hope you don't mind my barging in without knocking. Oh, that's all right, Tommy. Dagwood, this is our new neighbor, Tommy Cooper. This is Mr. Bumstead. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Bumstead? Mm -hmm. Tommy's quite a student. I think you'll be a good influence on Alexander. Oh, yeah. Mr. Bumstead, uh, I'm reading some anatomy books, but I must say that the shape of your head is most unusual. Oh, it is? Well... <laughs> Did your nurse ever drop you when you were a baby? No. You see, I never had to... Now, see here! I... I... Hey, I'm late. Oh, oh, children, your mom is leaving. Alexander, open the door. Hurry up! <laughs> Yes, Mary. Mr. Dittis, I've got that long distance call through to Mr. Rutledge. Good, put him on. Hello, Mr. Rutledge. Well, I just wanted to find out when you'll be in town. In about two weeks? Oh, that's fine. Our plans will be all ready for you by then. I've had one of my men, Dagwood Bumstead, working on them day and night. In fact, I expect him in at any moment with the first complete draft. I'll be looking for you. Goodbye. Let's 
see now. This week I'll pay for one tonsil, two of Alexander's cavity, two. Uh, hello, Wally. Having money trouble again, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Dang. Huh? How'd you like to borrow three hundred dollars? How'd I? Hey, guys, I certainly would. So would I. You know anybody who's got it? <laughs> <laughs> say, Ali, do you think you know who is in? I guess so. Say. You're not going to ask for a you-know-what. Yeah, I'll probably get it you-know-when. Look, Dag. Huh? If you're going to tackle dithers for a raise, yeah. do it differently. Use psychology. Uh, uh, don't start writing and asking for more dough. Oh, sure. oh, sort of gradually work up to it. Uh, talk about the weather. Uh, crack a joke. Crack a joke? Yeah. Uh, uh, flatter the old goat. Then crack down and let him have it. <laughs> do you think it would work? All he can do is say no. But he has so many different ways of saying it. Yes, Mary? Mrs. Bumstead would like to talk to you. Oh, she would. Put her on. Good morning, Blondie. What can I do for you? Dagwood left the Rutledge plans at home? Oh, for heaven's sake. What's that? No, no. Don't bring them down, Blondie. I'll take care of it. Goodbye. Now, are you sure it'll work? Sure, if you use my approach. Remember, weather, joke, flattery, raise. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Dithers. Weather. Oh, isn't this wonderful weather? Makes you feel like working. Does it? Uh, uh, oh, yes. A joke. <laughs> something amuses you, Dagwood? Yes, I heard the funniest story on the bus. Gee, it slayed me. I heard something on the telephone and slayed me, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, after I get through telling my story, you can tell me yours. I intend to. Oh, fine. Uh, <clears throat> and this is my story, Mr. Dithers. Uh, <laughs> it uh, seems there was a, a clerk at a bank. You can stop right there. And the clerk did... Uh, I don't want to hear your story. You don't? Oh. Well, uh, oh, flattery. <clears throat> you know, J.C., in all the years that I've been working for you, I've never seen you looking so... Uh, huh? How am I looking, Dagwood? I can't think of the word. Uh, maybe I ought to go to my office. Dagwood! Huh? Look here, you nitwit. I know you were hinting for a raise, but when you do stupid things like leaving those Rutledge plans at home, I could... Oh, I did forget them, didn't I? I just hope you made the necessary changes in those garage specifications. Huh? Well, did you? Oh. You didn't. Oh, how tortured can one get? Well, you, you see, Mr. Dennis, I was working on my budget last night, and I need $300 awful bad. $300? How can you speak of... Small change like that when you know I'm trying to borrow a hundred thousand dollars from Simon Rutledge. Whether I get it or not depends on those post-war housing plans you left at home. Dag when I could shoot you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Dithers, I didn't think you'd do it to me. Take care of Blondie and the children and Daisy and the five little puppies. Get up, you idiot. I didn't shoot you. Huh? Those are pneumatic drills. They're fixing the street. They are? Oh, oh my. Oh, Mr. Dithers, I, I'm just a bundle of nerves. I didn't get enough sleep last night. Well, if this drilling keeps up, you won't get any work done today. Yeah. Well, since you left the plans at home, you better do your work there. Oh, work at home? Oh, that'll be nice. It'll be nice and quiet. What's that? Excuse me, I, I didn't mean to yell. Quiet. Everything's quiet. What are they doing here? Well, you never know what's going to happen in a neighborhood fracas. Oh. Tommy, you didn't call the police. Well, I just became What's aware. going on here? Oh, nothing at all, officer. Mrs. Brady and I were just having a little argument. That ain't the way we heard it. Somebody called headquarters and said two women had opened up a second front on Shady Lane Avenue. I'm sure Mrs. Brady and I can settle our little 
discussion without the aid of the law. Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe the law is what we need around here. Oh, it's my fault. If they're not to blame, I'm responsible for everything that's happened. What has happened? Dagwood, what are you doing home? You haven't been fired. Oh, no, you see, Mr. D... Oh, never mind that. What has happened? I'll tell you what's happened. Your dog, Daisy, chased my cat, Henry, up a tree. And Henry's so sensitive, he might not come down for days. You shouldn't have told me that, lady. I won't sleep a wink tonight. Let's go, Bill. Well, aren't you going to do something about that dog running around loose? That's my department, lady. Huh? Well, where is she? Oh, Daisy? Oh, she's in the house. I, I hope. I think I'll have a look around. tell you what that dog did last week when I just hung my laundry on the line. Oh, how do you do? I'm a reporter. I heard the police siren and followed the car over. What's, what's going on? Oh, Daisy Bumstead chased Henry Brady up a tree. Yeah? What did the Bumstead dame do? Catch Brady with another gal? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Daisy's a dog and Henry's a cat. Oh, fine. I can see the headlines now. Dog chases cat. Editor fires reporter. Oh, great scoop. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe I can give you a story about Daisy. Let me read this letter from my son. It's this one. Bob's in the Navy waiting to come home. Well, I sent him some pictures of a few pin-up girls and a snapshot of Daisy. And that's what he wrote back to me. Dear Mom, thanks for the pictures of the pretty girls, but I like the snapshot of Daisy best. So did my pals. In fact, we liked it so much that we voted Daisy as the dog we'd like to come home to. Well, tell her for me she's the Navy's pin-up pooch. Pin-up pooch. Not bad, not bad at all. You know, I think I can do something with that. I thought you could. Frankly, I think Daisy should be tied up. And furthermore, I... Oh. Crime is marching on, and we're standing here. Now you keep an eye on Henry. And you tell your Daisy to stop chasing the boys. Come on, Bill. Blondie! Blondie, this man wants to see Daisy. Oh, what has she done now? Oh, nothing, Blondie. He's from the City News. He wants to interview you about Daisy. She's going to be printed up in the newspaper. Daisy oh. in the newspaper? Why? She's been voted the Navy's pin-up dog. Pin-up dog? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh Dag, but did you hear that? Our Daisy's going to be a, a, a celebrity. Yeah. Oh, get it, get it. Oh. <laughs> Finish up by the end of the week. Yes. Now tell Mary not to interrupt us. Uh -huh. Mr. Dithers, Alexander wants to talk to his father. Mary, we are not to be interrupted. But he says it's important. All right. Take it and make it brief. Uh, yes, yes. 
Hello? Hello, Alexander. Is there anything wrong? I can't hear you. All I can hear is mumbling. It's Daisy! She's dead! Wait a minute. What would you say? Oh, I said it's Daisy! She's dead! She's dead all over! Huh? Oh, no. Oh, no. Daggett, what is it? Daisy. She's been hit. She's spread out all over. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I think I'm going to faint. Oh, you mustn't do that, Daggett. No, you must get a hold on yourself. Huh? You know you can count on me to be your pillar of strength, someone to lean on. <laughs> she was such a cute little dog, Mr. Dithers. Every morning she'd lick the paper and run for my face. And I mean, she'd lick for the run and paper my face. Oh, what am I saying? <sighs> Uh, but at least she left her five children to take her place. Oh, they'll never do it. There's only one Daisy. Oh, no. I can't go in there to do this. I can't face it. Oh, but you've got to, Dagwood. For Blondie's sake. Blondie? Oh, I forgot about her. She must have is pretty bad. And the children, too. All right, we'll go, Mr. Dithers. I'm all right now. I don't have to have your support. I... Oh... So many friends. Please, please, let the dog's father through. Oh, Tommy, where's everybody, huh? In the living room. It's a good thing you came when you did. Your wife's worn out with the excitement, and Daisy's half dead. Half dead? You mean she isn't all dead yet? What? Maybe I could say a last goodbye to her. Huh? Oh, you're bearing up well, Dagwood. Fine. There you are, Mrs. Kelly. Pin up pooch. Huh? So she was hit and got spread out all over. Oh, oh she's alive. Thank you. There you are, Mr. Carter. Now, Daisy and I can't give any more autographs. We're really awfully tired. Yeah, but no I, more autographs. But, but, Dagwood, are you home? Yeah. Oh, isn't it exciting about Daisy? Yes, indeed. As soon as we heard about it, we left some very important work. Oh. Uh, pardon me. Pardon me. Didn't you hear what the lady said? No more autograph. I don't want an autograph. I want to see the owner of Daisy. My name is Theodore Glassby, uh -huh. and I represent an advertising company which represents Daisy Soap. Use Daisy Soap and smell as fresh as a daisy. <laughs> I created that slogan. Interesting. Go along, Dagwood. I haven't finished saying everything I have to say to you. Oh, yes, Mr. Dennis. Oh, wait, dear. Uh -huh. Don't you want to hear what the gentleman has to say? Well, well, yes. After all, you own Daisy, too. Oh, he does, does he? Well, we are going to put your dog to work. Uh -huh. We feel that with all this national publicity, that there's a great tie-up between her and Daisy Soap. Oh, for heaven's sake. Let's go, Dagwood. This is a penny-ante deal. Oh, it is, eh? Well, it just so happens that my company is willing to pay Daisy $100 every time she poses for Daisy Soap. And we believe we can use her indefinitely. A hundred dollars? Gee, Mr. Dithers, that's more than you pay me. <laughs> um, exactly what would Daisy have to do? Well, we haven't planned the whole setup, but she'll pose for pictures, possibly with movie stars. Oh. Movie stars? Mm -hmm. Oh, Daisy, how would you like that? <laughs> she isn't impressed, Mr. Glassby. Oh, but think what you could do with all that extra money. Buy victory bonds and maybe the few luxuries that your husband's salary won't allow you to buy. Oh, see here. And I am sure there are bills that are crying to be paid. Yeah, you must have been reading my mail. <laughs> then you can use that extra money. Here. No, here. Now, just to show our goodwill, here's a hundred dollars in advance. Oh. <laughs> now she's impressed. <laughs> It's the deal, Mr. Glassby. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> so you want to shake on the deal, too, eh, Daisy? We always say that, Mr. Glassby. 
said Daisy ran the house, but we never thought she'd be paying the bills. <laughs> no, we never did. <laughs> Gee, Daddy, huh? now you won't have to worry so much. Daisy can be the head of the family. That's right, Alexander. <laughs> now Daisy can be the head of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, Dagwood. Hello, Dagwood. Oh, <laughs> Ronnie, gee, it's good to see you. Oh, now, wait a minute. You didn't go and buy anything. Did yes, you? I did. The sweetest little outfit. Yeah. Mm, $48.50. You know, I told you we had to go easy this month. Oh, now, don't get upset, dear. We can afford to get a few nice things now. I should yeah. think so, now that Daisy's doing so well. <laughs> Daisy's got good taste, hasn't she, Dagwood? Yes, yeah, she has. <laughs> Oh, now, don't look so down in the mouth, Dagwood. I have something for you, too. Oh, you have? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, a watch. Look at that. Just the kind I've always wanted. Look at it. So Daisy played Santa Claus to you, too, huh, Dagwood? Mm. My, but she's generous. <laughs> and, Dagwood, I bought some beautiful little sweaters for the children, the kind we've never been able to afford. Yeah, I can understand that. Can you take me to lunch, dear? Well, First, we'll stop in the bank, and I'll deposit another one of Daisy's checks. Another one? Yes, dear. Oh, we're building up a sizable bank account. Isn't that nice? If Daisy keeps on working, she'll be wearing the pants in the family, and you'll be wearing the leash. <laughs> oh, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Alexander. Good morning. Daddy. I've got something I want to discuss with you. Yes? It's the business of Daisy. Oh, uh, <clears throat> what about her? Well, does she give me my 50 cents allowance for the week, or do you? Well, no, as a matter of fact, the, huh? Well, Tommy said that now that she's earning more money than you are, she's supporting the family. Yeah, well, you just tell that Tommy Cooper that no matter what Daisy earns, I'm still supporting the family. I must admit, Sonny, that, uh... After all, Daisy's earnings have come in handy, but as long as I sit at the head of the table, I'm the boss. Good morning, dear. Sit down and eat your breakfast. Yeah, but Daisy's in my chair. What difference does that make? She had the sniffles this morning, and I didn't want her to sit on the cold floor. What? But Blondie, that... that, that... Well, Daisy, don't you hear the paper boy whistling? Go and get the paper. She doesn't do that anymore, dear. That's Elmer's job now. Oh, Elmer! Elmer, the newsboy whistled. Oh, um, may I serve you some cream, Daisy? After all, uh, you paid for it. Dagwood, I don't like your attitude. In fact, I haven't liked your attitude all week. You've treated Daisy like a dog. I think you need a lecture. And just think, Dagwood, Daisy has paid all our bills just by posing a few times. You should be grateful. I am, Blondie. But I want to pay them myself. I'm the breadwinner. Oh, Blondie, you know how a man feels about supporting his family? Yes, I know, dear. And someday you won't need Daisy's help at all. Oh, thank you, Elmer. That's a good boy. <laughs> Hello there. Good morning, Tommy. Waiting for Alexander? Yes and no. I was waiting for you to come along. I just found out about your amazing encounters with Mr. Bumstead. And I've decided I'd like to witness the phenomenon. The phenomenon? Oh, <laughs> you mean about him knocking me down every morning? Well, I'm happy to say that those days are probably gone forever. He hasn't knocked me down in a week. He doesn't leave the house in a rush the way he used to. I don't understand what happened. Yes, indeed. We ought to be very happy Daisy's doing so well. It isn't every dog who has a Social Security number and pays an income tax. <laughs> Mommy, do you have to go with Daisy every time she models? Yes, dear. Daisy won't pose unless Mother's with her. You'll be all right with Mrs. Adams. She ought to be here in a minute, too. Oh! Oh! I'm late! Hello? Sandra, Cookie, your mommy's leaving! Get the door open! Oh! 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 
I knew there was a catch to it. He's been training her to get me. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Oh, my hell. Oh, well, look, Daddy. Uh -huh. Daisy Bumstead. Daisy Bumstead. Daisy B Imagine anybody writing fan mail to a dog. Well, if you'd like to know my opinion. I wouldn't. Very well, then. Come on, Alexander. We'll be late for school. Right. Oh, oh well, you, you come on in the house, Cookie. Miss Adams will be over here pretty soon, and Daddy's got to get to work. I wonder if there's greyhound blood in that family. Um, where is that, Miss Adams? I'm going to be late, and she... Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Adams. We're waiting for you. <laughs> You can't come over? Oh, but what'll I do with Cookie? Oh, it take her to the office? Oh, I can't do that, Miss Adams. Oh, no. And Mr. Dithers would be awful mad if I showed up with Cookie. Yes? Mr. Bumstead, I presume. Yes, that's me. I work for Blackie Leonard. You heard of him? Yes, he's the gangster. I mean, he's a nightclub owner. That's a little better, bud. Uh -huh. He sent me here to talk a deal over with you. Oh, uh, you were with me? Yeah. Uh, uh, Cookie, you'd run upstairs and get your hat and coat, and Daddy will take you to the office. Hi, Daddy. Yeah. Uh, won't you sit... Huh? Mm -hmm. Look, Garl, get right down to the facts. Blackie's got a girlfriend named Hazel. Hazel's crazy about dogs. She got a gander the picture of that mud of yours, and she wants it. Oh, Daisy? Yeah, how much do you want for the pooch? Oh, we don't want to sell it. <laughs> ah, you don't understand me, Bumstead. Oh, yes, I do. Look, I... Hazel wants the dog. Blackie gets what Hazel wants. So, Bumstead, how much? Well, we... I... I... <laughs> We couldn't sell her. Ain't that awful? He won't sell us Daisy. That's me, Daddy. Oh, yes, Cookie. It's too bad you don't want to do business legitimate. Yeah. You know, that makes things kind of complicated. Yeah. You better sell it to us, Bumstead, because we're going to get her anyhow. Yeah, but... Hey! Huh? Wait a minute. You're kind of clumsy with kids. What's the matter, baby? Did he hurt you? Huh? Hurt you, baby. Now, hey, you better think over what I said, Bumstead, and call me at Blackie's place, the Kit Kat Club. Goodbye, honey. Hey, you annoy me. How many times? I'm talking, and the guy's always been doing things. What's the matter with you, huh? Oh, come on, Cookie. Daddy, are those men going to take Daisy? Of course not. They, they were just talking through their hats. Like I'm talking through mine? Uh -huh. Oh, no. Hmm. I see we have company today, huh? Is, um, is Mr. Titus in his office? He came in about ten minutes ago. Oh. Well, I hope he doesn't come out because I want to put Cookie in my office before he sees her. So what if he does see her? What if he gets sore and fires you? You don't have to worry about money anymore. That little four-footed gold mine of yours is doing all right. Now, see here, Ollie. <laughs> you want him to hear you? Of course not. No, it is Cookie. No, no. You just be as quiet as you can and follow Daddy. Hey, what? Since when did my office become a day nursery? Oh, well, well you see, uh, Blondie had to take Daisy to work, and, and nobody could take care of Cookie but me. <laughs> now, you'll be very quiet, won't you, Cookie? <laughs> you see, uh, Cookie! 
Oh, uh, she won't make any noise, Mr. Dithers. Well, all right. She better stay out here or somebody can keep an eye on her, because I want you in my office. We're going to finish those plans today. Sure, Mr. Dithers, we'll finish them. <laughs> now, come on, Cookie. You can sit at a desk and make believe you're daddy. I don't want to sleep. <laughs> come on over here. There you are. Uh, we won't be bothered anymore now, Mr. Diddy. Cookie promised to be quiet. Good. Well, Dagwood, we just have to change this community house and we're through. Oh, boy, I hope Mr. Rutledge likes our plans. You'll get your loan and I'll get my bonus. Mm. And Blondie ought to be impressed when I show her what I can earn. And Daisy will sit up and take notice, too. Quiet. Hmm? Listen. Uh, I don't hear anything. That's just this. It. It's too quiet out there. I got somebody. <laughs> no, no, don't tell me. I, I, I'm gonna. I know. Oh yeah, I know. It's. Ah, it, oh, it's Joe. No, it isn't Joe. Now wait a minute. <laughs> Gee, this is fun. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Let me see. Who is it? <laughs> Mr. Tillers. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dithers. I'll put Cook in my office. Now, Giddies, the play hour is over. So they will all get back to work? Yes, sir. Daddy, let's call up Mr. Dithers. Yeah, go, no, no, don't, don't touch that, honey. Here, now, now, here. You sit right over here. <laughs> There you are. Yeah, nice pencil and paper. And I want you to draw Daddy some nice pictures, huh? Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. This community house will make history. Well, I hope Simon Rudley's thinks so. Of course, we could cut a new door in there. It's a good idea. Hello, Cookie. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> On the other hand, that. <gasps> oh, now, Dagwood, don't go to pieces. Now, <laughs> you just brace yourself and leave Cookie. this to me. Now, just leave this all to me. Cookie. Cookie? Cookie? Cookie, wait! Don't worry. Don't worry, Cookie. Don't, don't be afraid now. Oh, get her don't out of here, Dag. We'll take her back to Blondie. I'm getting too old. I can't take this sort of thing anymore. Well, I've aged ten years and I've too many myself. Well, get her out of here. All right, come on, Cookie. Don't worry, Daddy. I'll take you to Mommy. Excuse me, I was looking for my wife. Does she work here? Well, not exactly. She's here with my dog, Daisy. Oh, I see. Mr. Bumstead, hello! <laughs> and hello, little Cookie. Want to see your wife, Mr. Bumstead? Yes, I wanted her to take Cookie off my hands. Oh, well, she's in the studio with Daisy now, and the child might be in the way. But you can leave her with Miss Emery, and then you can pop in and see your wife. Oh, that'll be nice. Oh, and now, Cookie, you stay here with the nice lady, but uh, don't walk outside the window. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes. The, uh, our advertising firm maintains this photographic studio. Ah. In these rooms, we have models posing for everything from helicopters to hair tonics. Oh, Mr. Glassby, I'm just trying to get you in your office. Will you come in here a moment? Certainly, John. Oh, uh, you go right ahead, Mr. Bumstead. Your wife is in Studio 5 with Anthony, our head photographer. Oh, all right. What beautiful eyes and such silky hair. You're really the loveliest thing I've ever seen. Do you really think so, Anthony? Why should I lie, Mrs. Bumstead? I wish I could find someone as adorable and lovable as you. Oh. Yes, indeed, Daisy, you're a cutie. Huh? Why, Dagwood, what a surprise. Uh, this is my husband, and this is Anthony, dear. He's been saying the nicest things to Daisy. Yeah? I photographed all kinds of dogs, Mr. Bumstead, but Daisy is tops as far as I'm concerned. You're a lucky man to own this valuable piece of property. Uh, thanks. Okay. I think we're ready for one more pose, Mrs. Bumstead. Whenever you're ready, Anthony. Oh, Dagwood. I'm so glad you came to watch Daisy work. Oh, I brought Cookie with me, too, but the young lady in the reception room is taking care of her. Well, what happened to Mrs. Adams? Well, she couldn't come over and... Mrs. Bumstead, we're ready. Oh, all right, Anthony. Wait till you see Daisy all dressed up. <laughs> trouble, trouble, trouble. Always at the last minute. One of our male models just got word that his wife gave birth to twins, and he fainted twice. Puts us in a bad spot. We've got to get set on this ad today. It's not going to be easy to get a substitute at this late date. You see, he's got to look sort of, uh, uh... Come on, Daisy. Daisy, come on. <laughs> oh, you darling, you, you sweet, sweet thing. Come here. Come on, sit down. <laughs> Is there something wrong? No, indeed. Oh, Mr. Bumstead, how would you like to become a model? Huh? Where do you begin? Oh, there. Oh, you'll be perfect for this ad. And as I told you before, we do need someone very badly. Oh, no, no, no. I, I couldn't, Mr. Glassby. I, I, I don't know how to model. Well, all you have to do is to pose and get paid for it. Yes, but... Oh, it's very... Now, don't move, Daisy. I think we can take it now. Jimmy, get your fans going. All right. Here we go, Daisy. Now, steady. Hold it. Swell. That's it. You can stop posing, Daisy. Oh. <laughs> that's now, Daisy. It's all over. <laughs> oh, that's another hundred dollars for our smart little girl. <laughs> what do you pay models, Mr. Glassby? The top prices in town. It's a deal I'll pose. Great! I'll tell Miss Emery that we found our man. Now, you go into Studio 4 and I'll meet you there. Yeah. Careless. Uh -huh. Dagwood, did you see Daisy? Oh, yes, yes, oh. I uh, did. <laughs> Isn't it cute the way she poses? Yeah, I'm going to do a little posing myself. You are? Mr. Glassby thinks I'm a perfect type for a certain ad, and incidentally, I'll be well paid for my work. Oh, Dagwood, how wonderful! How much? Uh, well, I don't know, but I guess if uh, animals get $100 for posing, humans ought to get a lot more. <laughs> well, I've got to go over to Studio 4 now and get ready. <clears throat> Maybe they'll let me watch you, Dagwood. First, I'll take care of Daisy and Cookie, and then I'll come right in and see you. Oh, if you like. Oh. <laughs> well, Mr. Bumstead, I guess we're all set. You can undress in this little room here. I, I would... Is it undress? Yes, indeed. You're to pose for a bathing suit company. Oh. A bathing suit, huh? Oh, boy. Wait till Blondie finds that out. First you'll pose in an old-fashioned bathing suit. Uh. Then you put on our new streamlined peachy beachy suit. Yeah. The job will only take an hour or two. Oh, I've got all the time in the world. What am I saying? Mr. Dithers expects me back to the office. Maybe I'd better call him, huh? Oh, well, here, you can use that phone right over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Warren 5748. 
Yes, Mary. Dagwood's on the phone, Mr. Dithers. The phone? Why, you ought to be back in the office. Well, what is it now? Say that again. It sounded as though you said you were going to be a model. You are. Yes, Mr. Dithers. I, I figured during my lunch hour I could make some money posing. For peanuts, I suppose. No, for bathing suits. Well, be sure you don't go over your lunch hour. We've still got work to do. Oh, I'll be right back as soon as I finish, Mr. Dithers. <laughs> no, there's nothing here will detain me. Yeah, I know. We'll get the work done today. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, J.C., I've got some ideas about changing a few figures. What kind of figures, Dagwood? Dagwood! Well, talk, will you? What kind of figures are on your mind? Dagwood, say something! <laughs> Andy! Oh. Yeah, Mr. Glasby, I, I can't pose for you. What? Well, why not? Well, maybe... Oh, look. I, 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 I don't think that... Oh, I'm sure your wife won't be jealous of them. Yeah, but you don't know Blondie. Oh, but she'll understand you haven't any interest in these girls. Why, she knows you wouldn't give one of them a single glance, as I was saying, you wouldn't give one of them a single glance. Oh, oh no, of course not. Yeah, but Blondie will. I'd better call this off. Oh, but you can't. This ad must be done today. Yeah, but Blondie... Now, don't worry about her. I'll see that she doesn't come in yeah, here. But, but, oh, you want to earn yeah, some but, extra but, easy but, money, but, don't you? But, but, Why, of but, course you but, do. You but, just but, go into that dressing room. I'll take care of your wife. Is Dagwood ready to pose? Not yet, Mrs. Bumstead. Okay. However, there's a matter I want to discuss with you in my office. Oh, can it wait? I want to see Dagwood, oh, yeah. Mom. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to raise my voice. I guess I'm a little nervous today. You see, Mrs. Bumstead, Dagwood told me he wanted to surprise you and show you the picture after it's made. But I... I knew you'd say yes. <laughs> All right, let me see it. That's right, girls, you've got the idea. Bumstead, strike that pose I gave you. That's better. You see, Bumstead, the ad is going to read, you're as old-fashioned as this coot unless you wear a peachy beachy suit. Oh. All right, girls, give them the business. Bumstead, be yourself. Look like a doe. Yeah, yeah, no, listen. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Hold it. All right, boys, hit your lights. Here we go. Hold it. Swell. Now let's take a crack at the other one. The girls will think you're really cute when you wear your peachy, beachy suit. Uh, now, girls, you stay right here in Bumstead. You get into your sarong. Uh, uh, sarong? Oh, go ahead and change, Mr. Bumstead. Sure, surprise us. Oh, <laughs> oh I think the pictures are lovely, Mr. Now can I see Dagwood? Uh, uh, now, Mrs. Bumstead. Well, why can't I see him? Uh, because I promised him I'd keep you out. Uh, I mean, that is, he wants to surprise you with the finished picture. Goodness, it sounds like you two men are plotting something. <laughs> what a silly idea, Mrs. Bumstead. I wish Daisy wouldn't do that. No, she wants to see Dagwood, too. Well, she can't. Oh, Daisy just ran into the corridor. Oh, she'll be all right, Mrs. Bumstead. All right, girls, you can take your places now. Mr. Bumstead, we're ready for you. <whistles> Mr. Bumstead, we're ready for you. Yeah, it's a little drafty in here, isn't it? Oh. Not bad. Huh? Well, look at him. You look good, Bumstead. Now you take your same position. And girls, you know what to do this time. All right, come on. Come on, Doris. You get right over here. Now let's make this a good one. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, no. Bumstead, aren't you enjoying yourself? You look as if you expected your wife to walk in any minute. Well, do they have to do what they're doing? <laughs> a fine thing. The average man would pay to be in your spot, and you're complaining. I'm not an average man. Woo! Woo! Isn't that Daisy in one of the studios? Why, well, of course not, Mrs. Bumstead. Let's go. 
Daisy, will you go on and scram? Can't you see I'm working? Woo! Woo! It is Daisy. And she's giving the wolf call. <coughs> Daisy, don't look at me like that. Will you go on? Daisy, go on. Beat it. Can't you see I'm busy? You are, aren't you? Yes, I are. Blondie. Oh, excuse me, ladies. Oh, Blondie, I was just posing. So I see. Fun, isn't it? Oh, now, Blondie, I, I was just doing it to make as much money as Daisy. Why, Mr. Brumstead, I didn't say you'd get as much as Daisy. You're to be paid at our usual model rates, seven fifty per hour. And since you'll be posing for two hours, you'll earn $15. Uh, $15? Mm -hmm. So you were going to be paid more than Daisy. Oh. Evidently, it wasn't just the money that interested you. Oh, oh now, Blondie, you, you don't think... <laughs> oh, Blondie... Sorry, Dagwood. I tried to keep her out, but Daisy gave the show away. Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. That's all I've been hearing. Morning, noon, and night. Daisy's taking my place in the family. She's earning more money than I am, and now she's... She's got Blondie sore at me. Well, cheer up. Maybe after a little lunch, you'll see things differently. Lunch? Daisy keeps interfering in my life. I won't ever be able to eat. I'm not gonna stand for it. I'm not gonna let a dog run my house and family. I'll tell Blondie how I feel. I'm not afraid of her. Uh, is that you, Blondie? No, it's us, Daddy. Hey, what are you two doing out of bed? What are you doing out of bed? Well, I couldn't sleep, so I thought I'd make myself a little sandwich. Cookie and I couldn't sleep either. We're not very happy. Well, what's the matter, Alexander? It's Daisy. Yeah, Daisy. Ever since Daisy began working, home's been different. Yeah. Mommy has to spend so much time with her, we don't see Mommy very often. I might become a juvenile delinquent. Yeah, that's true. Huh? Mommy used to help me with my homework, mm. but now she answers Daisy's fan mail. Yeah, I know how you feel, Alexandra. Sometimes I wish Daisy would go away. And never come back. Do you both really feel that way? Don't you, Daddy? Yes, I do. Daisy was responsible for a lot of things happening today between your mother and me. And Mr. Dithers is angry at me because I didn't go back to the office. Yes, I wish Daisy would go away. But I'm going to do something about it. Well, it's about time we decided who was head of this family. Can anyone join in? Blondie, we were all a little hungry. I should think so. You three hardly ate anything at dinner. Yeah. Well, if you want me to leave, I'll... Oh, gosh, no, Blondie. This is a family affair. And I think it's time we had a family talk. Something's happened to us in the last few weeks. We've grown apart, and I think I know the reason. It's Daisy. Dagwood, you've resented her because she earns more than you. And you've both felt neglected because I've had to spend so much time with her. But don't you see that what Daisy is doing is for all of us? She's part of the family, and families aren't supposed to be jealous of each other. We all share in any good fortune that comes along. Just think over what I've said and see if you can't feel more kindly towards her. Oh, Dagwood, I want to apologize for this afternoon. I really didn't think you were interested in those... Peach beaches. Oh. Hmm? I sure feel better than I did. I must have been crazy thinking those things about Daisy, wishing she was gone. Can you imagine this house without her around? 
Why, she grew up with you, Alexander. And she is one of the families, and families are supposed to pitch in and work together. And maybe someday, Daisy's earnings will send you two through college. And if Mr. Dithers ever really fires me, and I need a nest egg, Daisy will be right there with a helping paw. Let's not ever think of sending Daisy away. Let's forget we ever mentioned the whole thing. What are we waiting on? Oh, boy. Word if she were? Oh, no. <gasps> I know. The dog catcher. Maybe she was running around loose and he picked her up. Oh, where is she? Huh? Don't pretend you don't know. You've got Daisy. No, I haven't. Honest. Yeah. I come over here to get her autograph for my kid. Yep. Yeah, but... And I brought her some chopped meat. You mean she's gone? She wouldn't have run away. Maybe she did. Huh? Oh, Alexander, what do you mean? Last night before you came down, Daddy and Cookie and I sort of mentioned we wish Daisy would leave. She might have heard us. But later we... You said you wanted Daisy to leave? Yeah, but... You three really said that? Yes, but... Oh, how could you? I... I... I can't believe it. Of course, she must have hurt you. Poor darling. Poor little girl. I'll call the newspapers. She must be around the neighborhood. Will you get me the city news, please? If anything's happened to her, I'll, I'll never forgive you. City News. I want the lost and found department, please. I can see her now, roaming through the streets, hiding behind ash cans, eating stale bits of bread. Hello, lost and found department. I want to report a missing dog. What kind of dog? Well, she's sort of a terrier, cocker spaniel, schnauzer, scotty, and poodle. You don't mean Daisy. Daddy misses his little girl. If Daddy doesn't get down to work, he's going to miss a nice fat bonus. Mr. Dithers, I, I, I Now, look can. here, Dagwood. I know how you feel about Daisy. I feel bad myself that she's missing. But she'll come back. Meanwhile, there's no point fretting about her. Now, Simon Rutledge will be here any minute. You've got to be on your toes when we talk to him. Dagwood, we've simply got to sell him on our plans so we can borrow that money. I know, Mr. I can't think about anything when I'm thinking about Daisy. What if she's hurt or, or hungry? I wake up at night hearing her calling. Dagwood, blind. Stop humanizing that dog and putting words in her mouth. For all you know, she's coming up the front walk right now saying, I'm home, Mommy and Poppy. I... You've got me doing it. Come into my office. Oh, Daisy, where are you? What a cute -um she is. Such a widow, honey bunny. Hi, boys. Oh, boy. Oh, Gather around. I got some news. Blackie, darling, see what the boys found for Hazel Wazel? So that's the pooch you've been wanting, huh? What's it supposed to be? So she isn't a thoroughbred, but I want her, understand? She looks kind of helpless, like me. 
As long as you're happy, baby. Who got it for her? Uh, Joe and me. We were leaving the club early this morning when we pipes the mud coming down the street, so we grabs it. Didn't even put up a fight. Well, we're gonna have a fight on our hands if we don't get out of town right away. The cops are wise to the last deal of ours, and we're plenty hot. We'll take Daisy, won't we? Yeah, we'll take Daisy. I don't think we should, boss. They got a plate up in all the papers. Yeah, they're even stopping all the cars and slashing them for her. Yeah? Well, that's not too good. We'll have to leave her then. You know, we can't get caught for stealing a month. I won't go unless Daisy does. Oh, baby, please. Wait a minute. I got an idea. Sure. Sure we can take the pooch. I'll get Doc to do some work on it. If he can change a guy's kisser, he ought to be able to do a little plastic work on a dog. Plastic work? But I like Daisy the way she is. Oh, now, honey, look. As long as we have to have the dog with us, we'll be dead pigeons. Now, the doc can change your eyes, make them smaller, and he can uh, shorten the tail. <whistles> Dye the hair another color. Could lop off those long ears. <whistles> Say, when we get through with that pooch, even our own father wouldn't recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dagwood, we're all ready for Rutledge. Stop looking like a sick cow. I can't help it, Mr. Dithers. Daisy's missing and Blondie's blaming me. Yes, Mary? Mrs. Bumstead is calling Dagwood. Check the phone, Dagwood. Yes, Blondie. Is Daisy home? No, Dagwood. But I just found out from Cookie where she might be. She told me two men were here the other day inquiring about Daisy. Hey, that's right. Two men did come to the house. They said they wanted to buy Daisy, and when I refused to sell her to them, they, well, they said they'd get her by hook or crook. You want to know the crook's name? Oh, it, uh, it was, um, wait a minute. Uh, oh, I, I, I can't think of it. Oh, Dagwood. Cookie said they mentioned a nightclub, but she can't remember the name. Oh, please say that you do. Oh, sure, I can remember it. It was, uh, 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 the, uh, uh um, Wait, wait a minute. Oh, gee, Blondie, I'm so mixed up, I can't think of it either. Oh, Dagwood. Yes, I'll go to work on Cookie, and you look up the nightclubs in the classified phone book. Maybe that'll refresh your memory. Yes, and call me right back when you find the name. Well, if Daisy's been dognapped, shouldn't we notify the police? I'll get it. Mrs. Bumstead? Yes? Don't you know who we are? No, I'm, I'm afraid I don't. Oh, you're the sailors from the South Pacific. You bought a Daisy, your pinup dog. That's right, kid. Uh, Bob Adams gave us this address. Uh, we have a present for Daisy. Yeah, where is she? That's what we want to know. Huh? Bula Bula Club, Cahoka Oka Club, Donovan's Grotto, Finnegan's Island. Yes, Mary. Ha Ha Club. He's here, Mr. Dithers. Oh, ho. Rutledge, God. send him in. He's here, Dagwood. Our man's arrived. Club Jamboree Club, Kettle Drum Club. Stop that, will you? Kit Kat. <clears throat> well, well, Mr. Rutledge, it's a pleasure to see you. <laughs> yes, indeed, Mr. Dillis. Oh. Is he ill? No, no, he's just having a little uh, dog trouble. Oh, I have trouble with my feet, too. <laughs> May I take your coat? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Uh, Dagwood. Dagwood! Take Mr. Rutledge's briefcase. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, thank you, young man. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Rutledge? <laughs> With regard to that first uh, project of ours... Kit Kat! Dagwood! <laughs> He's just full of animal spares, Mr. Rutledge. <laughs> well, we don't need him. <laughs> I guess not. I've investigated you and your company, Mr. Dithis, and I feel that you qualify for a loan. You mean you lend me the money? Yes. I had my lawyers draw up the contracts and make out $100,000. You did? Yes. Well, may I see the contracts? I'm afraid we'll have to wait until that young man returns. You see, they're in my briefcase, and he took the case with him. Oh. He took the case with him? Oh! Do you remember what he said when he left? Uh, 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 goodbye, I think. No, no, it was the name of a nightclub. Something like Knickknack. If I could see the name, I might remember. Look, Cookie, is it the name of a city like uh, Shanghai? Mm -mm. How about the name of a musical instrument, like the Banjo Club? Mm 
The drum club. Mm-mm. How about the guitar club? Mm-mm. That's it. The Kit Kat club. <gasps> Cookie, my precious. Oh, boy, oh. maybe there'll be a fight. Come on, guys, let's go. <laughs> yes, come on. Oh, that's right. There might be a fight. You three children better stay here. Oh. I'll call a cab. Oh, Mrs. Bumstead, that'll take time. My father's car happens to be in the garage, and I happen to know where the key is. You're in, Tommy. You can all come. Let's get the car, kid. This way, mates. Mommy, shall I call Daddy? All right, Alexander. Cookie and I will get ready. Hurry up, Cookie. Warren, 5748. Lollapalooza Club. Lulu's Dugout. Marigold Club. Yes, Marigold. Marigold? Mr. Dithers, is there any way of getting in touch with Dagwin? Alexander just found out Daisy's at the Kit Kat Club. I'll tell him when he comes in. Kit Kat Club? That's it. I know where that is. Come on, Mr. Rutledge. So the doc said he couldn't make it, huh? I told you he'd send his assistant over. She'll be here by now. Well, I'll give him just five more minutes. If he isn't here by then, we'll blow her. You hope the boys get packed. Okay, Maggie. Hasn't the doctor's assistant come yet? No, the goon probably can't find the place. Maybe that's him now. Just in case it isn't. Here, Daisy, darling, under the table. Come in. Come in. Excuse me. Well, I see you finally got here. Yes. Huh? I suppose you want to see the dog? Yes, that's why I came. This way, Doctor. Doctor? Huh? The doc's here, Hazel. Better get the pooch out. All right, Daisy, mm. baby. Come on out. <laughs> Daisy. Well, she is. Doc, think you can handle her? Oh, why, yes. Good. Well, go ahead. Oh, but I don't, I don't understand. Say, didn't your boss tell you we wanted you to operate on the dog so no one would recognize her? Operate on... Oh, uh... <clears throat> Uh, yes, but... Uh, well, can you do it? Can I do it? Oh, uh, yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, naturally, um, I can't operate here. Uh, I'll need my instruments, my uh, uh, saws, chisels, and pliers, and... Uh, oh, of course, I'll have to take the little doggy with me. <laughs> Blackie! I don't want to give up, Daisy. Oh, I know how you feel, my dear lady, but there's really nothing to worry about. <laughs> now that Daisy's in my hands. Hey. Uh, goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you know who this guy is? He's Bumstead, the owner of the door. What? Ooh. So, wise guy, you thought you were going to pull a fast one and double-cross me. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, Trying to make a sap out of me, huh? No, I wasn't. It... Well, you better stay here, ma'am. There's no telling what'll happen. See Dagwood, he's in there with important papers. Dagwood? You stay here and I'll go and get the briefcase and you can sign the papers. Don't let him get away now. I won't let her get away. 
And the refuge is ready to sign. Yeah. Well, help me find the briefcase. Yeah, but I gotta find Daisy. Never mind Daisy. Help me find the case. Yeah. Come on, Dagwood. Let's go this way. Dagwood, wake up. Wake up. I think I'll take a look at the floor, Shirley. Ah! Oh. My, but it's crowded in there. I'm going in. After all, I made a marriage vow that I'd stick with Dagwood for better or worse. <laughs> and things seem to be getting worse all the time. Sister, I want it, and what I want, I get. Hand back the pooch. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'd rather not. I'll count three, and then I want the dog. One, two, three. Well, Blondie's got Daisy. Now, I want that briefcase. Most exciting business deal I ever transacted. <laughs> Gee, Blondie, I don't care if Daisy is the breadwinner for the family, as long as we're all together. <laughs> You're right, Dagwood. Nothing matters but the five of us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the ten of us. 